Hey everyone, today I wanted to go through and share one really amazing resource for game development. This article was written by Ryan Clark. We're going to go through it and discuss all the various points within it to hopefully make your game an indie hit. Let's take the first point in Ryan's article, evaluating the quantity and the quality of the game's hooks. If we really look at this, it's the amount of hooks you have and how great they really are. And there are so many games we can look at that really back this up and really show that it's important to have great hooks in the game, that they can really sell your game and get people compelled to check it out. If you're wondering what I mean exactly by a hook, for a game really, it's something that compels people to try it out or discuss it. If you look at Superhot, that core mechanic of time moving only when you move really compel people to look at the footage for the game. If you mentioned that to someone, they wanted to ask you what that meant. If you saw it in a trailer, it was really compelling and interesting. That's not all though. Core mechanics in most games is something that should really hook people in. If your mechanic, the core thing of your game, is not a hook, it's going to make it a lot harder for people to really get invested in your game. Let me give you a few examples. Games that have really took off usually have a great core mechanic that also acts as a hook. Think about Portal. Portal has such a great hook, being able to move in a unique way and problem solve in a unique way. And their slogan really was thinking with portals. So Superhot had time moves only when you move being a unique hook, and Portal had thinking with portals, such an interesting hook, something you want to ask about, what do you mean thinking with portals? And then they check out the gameplay and they're in instantly compelled to try out the game. So I really believe in the core mechanic being a massive hook for the game paying off in the long run. The next thing I believe people should look at when considering major hooks is the art style. If you look at something like Borderlands, people were very interested in that cell shaded type of look. And that was a major hook for the game. There are lots of games with amazing unique art styles that really hook people into trying out that experience. There are also many other hooks such as music. And you could have multiple gameplay hooks, you could have your art style hook, um, music, stuff like this. You really need to consider what hooks you have to make your game unique in the marketplace and also something that people are interested in looking at. This brings us to the next point, evaluating the viability of the market for similar games. You could create something that has hooks and might potentially be really potentially interesting. But if people aren't looking for this type of game, it might not pay off. And what I mean by that is if you look at Superhot, we have already experienced slow motion and we've already experienced first person shooters. So we know it's a viable market, and what Superhot did is it really made the slow motion the core mechanic of the game. Slow motion was already proven as something viable in the FPS genre market, and even third person genre market. When you look at Portal, Portal is also viable because there are many other pu uh, puzzle games. Portal is presenting puzzles in a unique way, problem solving with portals. Cube did a similar thing, where you're pulling blocks out of surfaces to solve puzzles. So when you have this unique hook and this core concept, look at other games within your genre and see if your game would be viable. If you look at statistics, you can actually potentially predict if your game would have any form of sales. The reason why this is really important is, if you're in an indie studio or if you're even working by yourself and you want your game to be able to sustain that studio or yourself for a year or two, you need to figure out if that game is worth developing. I know this is all business, but it's really important. A lot of people want to make games for themselves. The problem with that is, if you make a game for yourself and you're the only one who wants to play it, you won't really have the funding to make other games, meaning you have to do another job, and that makes you kind of a hobbyist. If you want to be a professional indie game developer, meaning you're making money from it and supporting yourself, you need to consider if your game has hooks, if your game has a viable market. The last point is to consider how you can describe and promote your game. And really, this allows you to show how great your hooks are. 
Superhot was so easy for them to promote and sell to people. The art style and time moving only when you move. This really confirms how great the hooks are. And it allows people who are doing marketing for the game to really describe it and promote it so easily. Promoting it through pictures and that slogan of time moving only when you move. The same thing for Portal. That mechanic alone was selling people left, right and center. Promoting the game, you just had to see someone doing a, a section of that game. You didn't have to talk about it, it's, it really sold itself, and it shows in the numbers. I'd like you to remember that all of the points discussed here are a person's view from their success in indie game development. It is not a one solution fits all situations. It is not going to solve all of your problems. But if you take this advice and apply it to your game in your own unique way, it could potentially allow you to have a lot more success in your game's development. I hope this was really informative and please make sure to read the entire article by Ryan Clark. I kind of went into my own summary of this article. Ryan goes through completely different examples through his own experiences, and it is so valuable. I really appreciate that Ryan Clark took the time to write this article on Gamma Sutra. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next one.